Well, welcome back to the channel, guys. Appreciate y'all tuning in and watching the other stuff. That was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, I know you have content like two, three weeks, maybe four, something like that. Anyway, I do work a full-time job. I'm a crane technician, so that's anywhere from being an electrician, uh, maintenance mechanic, ocean inspector, you know, all into one from little come-alongs all the way to biggest crane I ever worked on was a 1200 ton DC bridge crane. So that was pretty cool. So I got that and then, you know, I got my own personal business where I do wiring harnesses, custom wiring jobs, wiring repairs. I do repairs on general trucks, cars, performance upgrades. So, but I'm <clears throat> gonna try and get back into it at least once every week, maybe once every two weeks. Uh, so I, I know I've seen a lot of people asking questions about this thing as far as like they want more information More details about the truck uh, So it is a 2000 VP 44 originally truck it was originally a dually So that's why the bed doesn't match this. I know I talked about that in the last video or the one before the last Anyway, uh, I seen a bed guy wanted to trade for a dually bed on marketplace. I hit him up I went ahead and pulled my bed off sight unseen he pulls into the driveway and it's this lovely color of not white so i was already fully committed by then so we just we just sent it. it is what it is uh like i said it was a vp truck it was bone stock when i bought it uh then i slowly declined from there thinking a vp 44 could be fast <laughs> For a little context, a little story about this thing when I first got it. So, of course, it was bone stock, stock trans included. Uh, the factory turbo went out, blew the sails out of it. And so I just decided to buy a no-name HX40 off Marketplace. I bought some Ducky 7x11 injectors. Slapped them in there. No head studs, of course. Uh, blew that turbo. So then slapped a box 366 turbo and I think I went up to a 7x12 or bigger injector from Ducky on the stock trans mind you. Uh, smoked that transmission not long after. Put some head studs in it finally. Uh, and then once I smoked the trans I bought a built Garen trans off the marketplace which it did indeed have a billet triple disc billet input. Uh, and other than that, I didn't take it apart, minus like taking the pan off, change the fluid. So put that in there, and it wasn't even, I think, two weeks later, took it to the drag strip for the first time, and we really seen how low that converter actually was. It wouldn't even make five pounds on the line, so I launched it. <laughs> he could get it to spool up higher so uh, he said he goes in there locks down on it pretty hard and it eventually gets up 10 pounds and then it just lunges forward and dies so we loaded it up with a ratchet strap of course because the trailer had no winch on it that was fun uh, got it home a couple days later got it torn apart and we had to use a mini excavator and a bobcat to pull the converter out of the trans because the hub and the pump welded itself together so that's pretty fun all right so after we got the trans situation figured out sent the converter off to garen uh got it restalled to a 2000 style stock uh got a new pump from transstar put everything back together after it took garen like four months with my converter uh got it all back together took it down the road and it was just steady just blowing through the trans just slipping like crazy brought it back realized that Transstar did not put all the bolts in the pump and I had no clue that that was a thing. So anyway, that was a good learning experience. So ended up buying a 48 pump for it, swapped it in, made sure all the bolts were in there this time, made sure the trans was good to go, threw everything back in there and uh, it would not shift out of second gear. No lock up, nothing, just first or second. So got the look in, in the trans, found the 2-3 accumulator piston was snapped in two, got that replaced, 
and finally the trans was back to being good. So, buddy's fourth gen, he blew the uh, engine in it. He has a 467, the police went on his fourth gen, and we decided for funds, we was going to take and put it on the old VP, you know, because all VPs are race trucks. Oh, what a loser! He did pretty good uh, until I blew a head gasket. So, as soon as I did that, I took the head up to the machine shop here in Charlotte. They did good work. Uh, had an O-ring, deck, pressure checked, all the above. Slapped it on, and I think it made it with that 467 for like 550-ish miles, maybe 600. Uh, blew the head gasket again, got it back, tore the head off, had it checked. Thought maybe, you know, the head gasket got nicked or something. So put a new one on there, had the head decked again and O-ring again. Put back on there and as soon as you crunk it up, within 30 seconds, the coolant was pressurizing. Pull the head off again and that's when we finally find that cylinder one is cracked from the top to the bottom. Once we found that out, I uh, always wanted to have this thing actually make some decent power. Uh, so I figured it was time to Commonwealth swap it. So about two weeks after that, I found a 6.7 in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee. It's about six and a half hours from here. I hopped in my buddy's truck, his, actually his mama's truck, in second gen, and we had just got done putting a fresh built street tow trans in it. And this was its break-in period, was driving six and a half hours one way to pick an engine up. Go out there, scoop it up, come back, and uh, that has evolved to what we see. stock 2011 6.7 engine got it all the way back home went through it made sure everything was good uh, put head studs valve springs push rods stuff like that in there I uh, originally took the CM 2200 which is factory 2010 to 2012 ECM I uh, took that factory harness out slimmed it down made it standalone ran it in here uh, that ECM is not a very good one. If you ever do the swap, do not use that ECM. It's garbage. Uh, it wasn't happy. I had to run a voltage regulator on it. So I put a T6 475 on it, 96, 132 exhaust side. Uh, on stock fuel with Firepunk tunes, it actually ran pretty good. As you see, it's got dual pumps, 150% S&S. It's got a Finley Precision Inductions Custom HE5, 76 millimeter with 8610 exhaust side. Uh, my boy Jimmy McFalls, he helped me a lot when I first did this swap, and he does amazing fab work. So I got that. Also got a custom stainless intercooler pipe on this side to go around the common rail power steering pump. So, I got tired of the CM2200 factory ECM on this thing, so I swapped to a CM2100, which is an 07 and a half to 09 factory ECM for a 67. Swapped it on here, built the harness. Built the harness in like two days because I had an event in Wilkesboro I wanted to make. Uh, done that. Uh, Larson, he got me my tunes pretty quick for that. Uh, everything worked out, made it. And other than that, I mean, it's done really good. The stainless manifold, I decided not to polish it because I wanted to make rod run in time a couple years ago. So didn't have no time to polish it. So I just sent it as it is. And it turned into this pretty cool color. But yeah, I mean, this thing, this thing gets driven more than most people's vehicles I know. And it's not even a daily driver. 
I drove it seven hours to one way to Alabama a few weekends ago for a buddy's wedding. I beat on it down there seven hours back. Uh, that following weekend, I drove it two hours to Rudy's, raced it there, done just fine, two hours back home. And just recently, I drove it straight up the mountains three hours to uh, a shop up there. So, and I also had a bunch of people ask me what needs to, to be done to set it in there. So it's basically a factory of VP44 mounts. And depending on what trans you're running, you'll need the adapter plate to go with that. So like I'm running the 47 and I had to get a 48 or G56 adapter plate from a Conrail. Cause you need that cam, uh, the cam O-ring. Cause your regular uh, 24 valve and 12 valve adapter plate does not have that. So you need that, but you don't need to do anything to your drive shafts. You don't need to do anything to the transmission mount. The uh, only this right here, the high pressure power steering hose, you will need that off the common rail. As you can see, mine's long because it came off the common rail. But you can do like some people like Duncan Finley, he made his own, which I will be doing shortly, make all that all new. Uh, other than that, I mean, you know, you can put an electric vacuum pump on here if you want your HVAC to work, you know, so it don't default to the defrost. Uh, I know a bunch of people ask about if I can build them a harness to make the tack work and the factory dummy gauges, which my CTS2 just mounts right over factory tack because it gives me everything I need on the common rail side of the engine. Uh, but yes, that is possible, and no, that is not a harness I can just make and send you because that is a ton of extra termination that the end user, which is you, will have to do, and then I'll be on the phone with you for 40, 50 hours trying to explain to you how to wire something up. The only thing that we did run into is clearance putting the motor in. So uh, my suggestion would be to pull the head off putting the motor in. Or use fire pumps nice little uh engine hoist bracket thing yeah we was uh rednecking it whenever yeah. we put this thing together that's the only downfall we did was bend that cowl up a little bit right there yep did opt out for electric fans because it, for one it gives you a lot more room in case you need to do something and two it looks better uh this is an ebay aluminum shroud with two i think it's spalding 16 inch fans I got each of those wired to its own relay, wired both into a switch. That way I can turn them on and off anytime I want. Uh, never have any issues. I've sat in stop and go traffic for half an hour or more in the middle of the summer in the heat, no issues. Uh, pulling mountains, no issues. Making a pass down the track or pulls on the street. And never, it's never given me an issue. Most of the time I don't even need to turn them on. So it's a good thing if you want to get rid of the factory stuff. Even if you're still running a factory VP engine or a 12 out, it's pretty good if you're not doing heavy towing. So, I had long bars on it in the rear. I uh, decided I want to go cow tracks route, slap them on there. That was a real pain if you ever do that by yourself. So it's not fun. Fellas, it started raining. Yeah. So we're going to try to uh, uh, wrap this up a little bit. Uh, it's got the fast on there, which was the fast that was on the VP, and it still to this day maintains 18 pounds uh, lift pump pressure. So basically all I did was cut one coil out of the front. I did it a couple different times, but I ended up liking just one coil cut on the front. And then I also removed the rear blocks out of the rear, which are factory like four and three quarters of an inch. Done that, uh, removed overloads, new U-bolts, and it actually rides pretty good, minus the cow tracks. Seat's fairly level. Not your grandpa's 24 valve on TikTok and Instagram. He makes some of the best door handle lights and if y'all follow him and whatnot, Pretty soon he's going to be doing custom projector headlights, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, so he made those and... Oh, got to turn the key off there. Come on. What is it? Oh, look at that. Switchbacks. So 
now as you can see, it's real nice stuff. Uh, looks really cool going down the road at night. That is pretty sweet. All right, thank you guys for watching. Uh, as you can see, the clouds here, we did get rained on, so we hope you like this video and appreciate it. Uh, gonna be putting some streetcar takeover content in there because we did just get back from that a couple days ago. Uh, super cool stuff out there. Uh, comes once a year, so it's pretty fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank y'all.
GTR in the right lane. And a, I call that Desert Storm Camel because I'm not old. Chase and the flavor of the week over there is uh, 